Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris and boy, there are some people who are not going to like this one. In his book, Goodbye Good Men, author Michael Rose takes a close look at the extremely disturbing issue of homosexuality in the Catholic clergy. Now, despite some criticisms, the book on a whole is a very good examination of the topic. It's no secret that in the 1960s, many men who were homosexuals entered Catholic seminaries. And that trend continued for many, many years, even decades. Eventually, these men were ordained and moved up the ranks in the church to positions of influence and even into the episcopacy itself, becoming bishops. After 30 or 40 years of not-so-secret homosexuality in the clergy, our blessed Lord finally allowed the light to shine on their crimes as the dreadful news of the clergy homosexual sex abuse scandal broke. Now, the media played this off as pedophilia. This is not pedophilia. That's a depraved attraction to children who have not yet reached puberty. What plagued the Catholic Church and Catholic priesthood for 30 to 40 years is what is properly called aphebophilia, a sexual preference for post-pubescent boys, in the case of homosexuals, as many of the priests were. Cardinal Silvana Tomasi of the Vatican even made this important distinction himself a couple of weeks ago. Aphebophilia not pedophilia. Why does this matter? Because it goes right to the heart of the moral corruption in the church in America for the past 40 years. The church has become frozen because the leadership has been paralyzed by this very issue of homosexuality in the ranks of priests and bishops. The moral bankruptcy has translated into financial bankruptcy as well, and we mean financial bankruptcy literally. Just this week, the seventh diocese, the seventh diocese in the country, Wilmington, Delaware, filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The others, so far, are Spokane, Washington, Tucson, Arizona, Davenport, Iowa, Fairbanks, Alaska, Portland, Oregon, and San Diego, California. And let's not forget the huge, huge financial hits that the Archdiocese of Los Angeles took when they actually had to sell their headquarters. They had to sell the Chancery Building to pay the $600 million settlement. And of course, Boston, where the storm first broke, is awash in red ink. When liberals are in charge, moral bankruptcy will always lead to financial bankruptcy. So now for too long, too many homosexual priests and bishops and other priests and bishops sympathetic to them have been running the ship in the U.S. This is why these constant scandals keep popping up, like the bishops giving millions of dollars to ACORN and other pro-culture of death groups. This is why Catholic education is in such a dismal state. Homosexual priests and bishops and lesbian nuns quietly maneuvered their way into positions of power and then turned the ship off course. They did this at Notre Dame with a theology department fa uh, faculty peppered with homosexuals and their allies. They did it at Georgetown and many other Jesuit schools. All of these scandals have occurred with one goal in mind, the use of the Catholic Church to advance the homosexual agenda. And as long as their crimes stay hidden, they were being successful. Uh, but see, our Lord had a different plan. Just as God the Father used the Gentile Cyrus, the king of Persia, as the means to bring the Jews back to the promised land, he used the secular media to shine a light on the moral failures of these various religious. And now the ship is turning back around. One by one, these bishops and priests who rained down spiritual terror on the church for decades are finally exiting the scene. In their place are good bishops and holy priests who love the church and the faith. Now to be certain, they're still in the minority, but their numbers are growing every day as the number of their adversaries are shrinking. In the not too distant future, the reign of liberal terror will come to an end and the church will once again be a powerful force for good in the culture instead of a floundering ship knocked about by whatever winds and waves come around. So get on board now and join the fight. Today the church, tomorrow the world. I'm Michael Voris. Please help us keep delivering these kinds of messages that so desperately need to be heard and acted on. Join RealCatholicTV.com today as a premium subscriber, become immersed in the faith established by Jesus Christ. The Catholic Church is the only hope against evil because that is its God-given mission. 
As our Lord said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Join RealCatholicTV.com today as a premium subscriber and come to learn and love Christ more deeply.